fearless and one of a kind, figure skater Johnny Weir is a thrill to watch on and off the ice. He first charmed me at the Olympics in Vancouver, and I still can't get enough of his world-class act. Delicious diva and incredible human being. This is FaceTime with Johnny Weir. Three-time U.S. champion, two-time Olympian, world medalist, Coatesville, Pennsylvania's Johnny Weir is a household name in figure skating and a pop culture icon on the rise. Inside, I'm definitely an artist, and that, that's something that has only helped my, my skating. Known for his outrageous style and outspoken views, Weir is a media darling and a beacon of individuality. When I wake up every morning, I need to be inspired by myself, and then everything else will fall into place. It's this fierce sense of self and commitment to creativity that's guided Weir throughout his career, and it's paid off. After teaching himself to skate on the frozen cornfields behind his home at the age of 12, Weir won his first championship four years later. These days, he's a bona fide brand with a book deal, a reality show, and a primetime gig as a judge on Skating with the Stars. They were like, okay, at least for the first week, just give us one week where you're kind of normal, almost normal, <laughs> and don't curse. <laughs> and whether he's catfighting with rival Evan Lysacek or defending his right to sexual freedom, Weir's world is worth watching. You've uh, always felt comfortable in the eye of controversy, oh, or yes. so it seems. Yeah, no. Any controversy, I think, will follow me, no matter what. <laughs> do, but do you stir it up on purpose sometimes, just to never. be a little naughty? Never on purpose, never to, to get a headline. Because I have a very free mouth, and you know I was raised in that way. My mother always said, you have to tell me what you're thinking, I can't read your mind. So I grew up saying exactly what I wanted to and never being reprimanded for it. I take no prisoners, I have no regrets, I'm, I'm never afraid, and... Um, I suppose the only time I really felt very hated was during the 2006 Olympics when um, I pretty much lost America's men's figure skating medal and um, I, I really bombed my, my performance and um, love quickly turned to hate between the short and long programs and um, that's the only time that I was ever really upset or frightened or scared with my public image but people accept me for, for who I am and that's something that you can't buy in this world. Do you find that there are many other kindred spirits uh, that you can relate to out there? I'm the likes of Lady Gaga. Do you feel that she's kind of a kindred spirit? Uh, very much so. When I met her, she the first time she was she was so wonderful, so open. She had seen my performance to her to her song, and and she knew things, and she was so um, so explicit about her love of what I was doing and of what she was doing, and. I mean, she was in the middle of a photo shoot, and she had just come from the Much Music Awards the mm. night before, and she was going someplace else the next day. And, you know, she is somebody that you really can see is married to her work and making art. Mm. Well, you certainly seem to have uh, consciously cultivated that um, almost persona for yourself, yet at the end of the day, you know, maybe it isn't so much of a manufactured image it's just going with your heart and exactly. organically this is what grew out of it this yeah. crazy brand of this yours. this crazy branch we could say this, this crazy cr rose yeah. bush um, no that's that's really what it is and I I don't manufacture if I'm going to live life once I'm going to live it exactly the way I want to and I don't care who I offend if people love what I say or hate what I say it doesn't matter because it's all something that I own when did you make up your mind to be that fearless I grew up fearless. You can't be a young male figure skater from the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, and have fears and be scared to take a step forward. You can't get out of a small town if you can't step forward. So I've never been afraid to fall down and have to claw myself up again. And was it your upbringing that? I, I think it was. I mean, you for that? my parents are both very strong people. They both grew up in very strict households, and they wanted my brother and I to be very free. And uh, my brother and I are very, very different, but we've had the same freedoms to grow up and experiment and try to do whatever we want and, you know, just be, just live. And that's the greatest gift a parent can give you is to let you fall down. Mm. What about, um, you know, people in your community, you know, how accepting were they of 
of who you were from the get-go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the flamboyance. How do they, how do they relate to that? Um, it, it was a mixed bag, really. I mean, my extended family was really upset when I started to skate. They thought it was silly because we're simple people. We don't have figure skating boys in our family, and we don't have uh, families uprooting themselves and moving to a different place so that one of their 12-year-old kids can train for an Olympic sport dream. Um, you know, they were upset, but once we moved and I started to train, I started to feel accepted, and all the other kids were training too, and I felt like everyone was on the same page as me, and that's when I felt very accepted. And then, being from a small town, I went to this giant public school near my ice rink, and for the first time, saw more than one African-American person. And then, you know, people calling me names when I walked down the hallway, and, and you know, I was like, okay, this is real life, this is different, I'm in the world now. And that also helped me make me stronger, because there I was, this, you know, 80-pound, tiny kid in, a, in the middle school with giant-sized people with beards and muscles and, and accents and funny things. And I had short jeans on, and I could walk down the hallway and be completely fine because I knew I was going to the Olympics. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the saving grace, yes. sports. I guess I'm, you know, sort of asking you about this. It's been, you know, this rash of, uh, you know, teenage suicides. Like, I mean, I, there was never a time that you felt bullied or, you know, despondent to that that point, was there? Um, no, I, I never felt. Of course I was bullied, but I never felt there was no way out. I always understood that these are small-minded people that wouldn't go anywhere and I would be the one that would laugh last. And that's been my conviction since I was 10 years old. And it, it's so shocking and so sad to see what's happening in the world right now. I mean, nobody should be neglected the chance to be an individual and to be unique. And for me, suicide, while it's terrible, it's something that you don't change anything. You end your life. These people don't learn anything and they've won. So if I could urge, if anyone's watching this and I can urge them, please don't hurt yourself. Don't kill yourself. It's not the answer. Everything will be okay. Really, there's a silver lining to every situation. Keep on marching. Keep on, make your army, even if it's just you, an army of one. Make your army and walk forward. Don't step back. Coming up, Johnny Weir opens up about his notoriously private love life. I had a very strong relationship for four years before the 2006 Olympic Games. That crumbled miserably. Plus, there are lots of skaters that I don't like. Johnny names the names on his skating hit list.